Hello, my friends, how are you doing? Today, we are going to compare the Affinity Photo Developer Persona for raw development to DxO Photo Lab and Lightroom Classic, both in their functionalities as raw development tools. Let's get started. My name is Olivio, I'm a professional designer, and I want to thank all of my patrons who support me and make these videos possible. So here, as you can see, I have a very challenging picture. This is from my trip to Barcelona. It is exposed for the sky, so the foreground is very dark, and it looks like we can't really do much with that, so we need to have a good tool to extract all the beautiful information that is in this photo and that is actually possible. So I want to compare the functionalities in these three softwares regarding to what they can do in RAW and also talk about why one tool might be better or worse than the other tool. So we're gonna start off with so we're gonna start off with Affinity Photo Developer Persona and Let's have a look here what we get. Now on the left side, you find some tools like for example, red eye, blemish removal, overlay paint tool. You have an overlay erase tool, overlay gradient tool, and then you can also crop and have a white balance tool. That's basically it here on the tool side. And then on the right side, we have some tabs with some extra settings. In the basics, we find exposure with black point brightness, enhance with contrast clarity, saturation, vibrance. Down here you also have white balance, you have shadow and highlights, and you have different profiles, color profiles that is. We are going to use sRGB. And then of course you have settings for your lens. You have settings for details like, for example, detail refinement, noise reduction, and noise audition. Also, we have tones in here, like for example, of course, the curves, then we have the black and white, when you want to have a black and white version of your image, and you can also do split toning, right? And split toning goes, this is important to point out between highlights and shadows here. So two tones, right? Could be more. Okay, and then we have overlays. Overlays are basically like layers. So you can paint onto here with your brush, for example, a selection for the sky if you want to, or what you can also do is to create an overlay like this as a gradient, and then you can do individual adjustments. You can see now this is just addressing this upper part here where the gradient is. Now, of course, this is a little bit of a problem here because we can't do a fine selection. You could, of course, try to like select everything here by painting it in with a brush. But you can see here we have a lot of details here also in the background and stuff. That's not going to be an easy job, right? So from that alone, you can see that the tools are kind of bare bones. Now, what I can do here, for example, is to make the foreground brighter. I could go here and push up our exposure, but that is not really going to give me a good result, of course. Then we can also go down here to shadows and pump those up. You can see we get some more details, but this is ending rather soon. And you cannot go over 100%. That's the maximum we can do. Now, here's another thing I want to point out, and this is pretty important. When you do adjustments here, let's kick up the exposure really high, and I click on develop. This is rendering this into the picture. Now, the original raw file still is the same because we haven't exported it because we haven't saved anything. So the original raw file is untouched. But the thing is now, if I would go back to my developer persona here, you can see that now exposure is again at zero. So this is not non-destructive. This is rendered into the file. I cannot change these settings even though I didn't leave the software. And that's a bit of a problem, especially if you want to play around with different ideas later on with the adjustments you're doing, you might want to go back and have that freedom to adjust these kind of things. And also, as you have seen here, we didn't really come that far 
with our adjustments with what we can do and there is no kind of smart selection in the sense that it understands what is going on in the image or has some kind of uh, for example here we find our selection brush tool that can help us select different shapes but we don't have that in the developer persona now let's look at other tools because as i always say if you have these abilities from raw you need a software that can support you that is really important and affinity 4 is a really amazing software for editing and you have all these filters and adjustments and uh, layer effects and you have live filters and so much stuff you can work with but in the raw developer department it's very basic so let's look at some other options here like i said i want to compare it to photo lab which we have over here and here you can see we have the exact same picture as before now here we already have more smart settings more adjustments but we also have the huge benefit that the adjustments we do here are non-destructive i can always go back to them and adjust them and on top of that I can also create virtual copies which means because they are not destructive because they are not rendered onto the picture all the kind of settings that I'm doing are basically like a recipe before you bake the cake right so you can have multiple recipes for the same picture let's have a look at what that means so first of all let's look at the settings over here you have a lot of settings so you can immediately see that there is a ton more stuff going on here also you can make your own version down here for example you can see here i have my settings that are called olivio test in this case here and there's just the stuff in here that i use a lot so let's go in here and do some adjustments so for example when i push the shadows up here you can see that i get a lot more visibility in my picture i can push down here my highlights if i want to and i can additionally push up here the exposure and you can already see that we have a lot more information in here but of course we want to set up the feeling of the picture we want to have a nice sunset warm lights all these kind of things so let's play around with that and adjust these settings and you want to see how quick that goes and how deep we can go here so another thing we have in here is clear view you'd only have that with the elite version of photo lab not with the standard version but i quickly want to show you here this is a kind of often dehaze kind of effect but here it works really beautiful we get some very nice details in the sky here and still we have some nice details here in the foreground let's do some more adjustments here first for example i want to have some micro contrast this is also something i don't find in affinity photo micro contrast is compared to other contrast the difference is micro contrast is the contrast in the smaller structures of the picture contrast is the contrast in the larger structures of the picture so when i have micro contrast it's a little bit like clarity or like texture where i get more details in the different smaller elements i have in my picture so let's go in here and do some more adjustments of course i like i said i want to have the picture a lot warmer like this so now already we have some nice sunset feel here let's see what else we can do here um let's see vibrancy we can kick that maybe up a little bit then down here the green colors i find are too extreme so you can see down here we can do some adjustments for these different values that we have here so let's for example reduce the saturation of our green values a little bit because they're sticking out pretty hard I don't want to have that I can also bring the luminosity of that down a little bit more like so and then already it looks pretty nice now what I can also do here that is a very interesting thing is I can go here to local adjustments and with that for example when I right click I have this wheel where I can select what I want to have a control point I can have a gradient I can have an auto mask and you can also just brush it in so let's take a control point here set that into the sky make it on the like sky area it's kind of understanding what is going on that's very helpful here and what i want to have here is a little bit more of that contrast in the sky so i have a bit more structure a little bit more of clear view up here let's push this up uh like so 
Okay, and then you can still move that around to different areas to see what kind of effect you're getting from that. And you can also place it in different areas if you want to. Let's see here for that. Um, no, no, maybe not the color. Let's have some more saturation here in the sky, I think is good. Put this over here and then maybe create a second point over here. And you can see now we already have a very dramatic sky uh, and that looks very nice. So now we can, if we want to create another point down here, like so, and I can say, for example, I wanna have some more exposure here in the foreground. Let's have a look at that. Let's also make maybe a little bit more contrast here. And then let's see, bring up the highlights down here and also bring up the shadows a little bit down here. That's okay. Let's move this around a little bit. That looks good. Okay, perfect. So you can see now this area is a little bit better. And already we have a pretty cool picture from what before we didn't really see anything. So there's a lot of interesting values in here and you can see it didn't take very long. Now I want to dive really quickly into what we get from virtual copies here. So let's go back to the library. And by the way, you will see all of these pictures on Saturday where I have my 72 hour Barcelona video where I show you how I do the photos, how I edit them afterwards, talk a little bit about why I photograph these scenes in a certain way. And this is gonna be really interesting. So here now, let's see, we can have uh, virtual copy. So you right click, create virtual copy, and you can see that this will carry over the edits I've done so far for that image, but you can also reset that if you want to. And now I could, for example, go in here and say, well, let's go down here and say, I want to have in the general settings, go a little bit more like this, maybe, for example, that could be interesting or something else I want to do. Like, for example, let's say I want to have a little bit more uh, of a cold situation here, more like a blue hour kind of situation. So I can do that. And then afterwards I can compare these pictures if I want to. So you can see this is still here. We can still look at that, no problem. Let's bring this up here a little bit like so. So you can see this is one. And this is the other version. And you can create even more versions if you want to. Like if you said you wanna have a black and white version, this is also the benefit here is you have these presets and they also come with previews. They are live previews for what you're doing. So that's also very useful. For example, this looks cool. So now we have that applied. I can still pump up the shadows here if I want to, to give me some more detail. And so you can see now we have a different version of the same picture. And basically now we already have three different versions of that one picture created very quickly and very intuitively of what we want to do. And this didn't even touch what you can do with Nick Collection on top of that. Now let's go over to Lightroom and see what we can do there because there is some big differences between Photolab and Lightroom. You will see in a second what I mean by that. So here we have the same picture and on the right side here, Lightroom has the benefit that it is very, very organized. So when I go down here, you see these settings and all of these settings have their meaning and all of these settings have their specific area and are designed in the way that you would expect it. So they are designed how a human would use it, not how a machine would execute that. And that's a huge difference on the workflow, right? Then on the left side here, you have a lot of different presets basically that you can also apply. Right now we don't see very much because the picture is not very bright, but we can fix that in a second. So let's do this again. Let's bring up the shadows here like so. And you can see here shadows actually means shadows. Look at the sky. In the sky, we do have dark areas. Look at the clouds up here. Those are dark areas. Those are areas that could be defined as a shadow, but they are not defined as a shadow by Lightroom. Lightroom is understanding this down here is the shadow. So that's also very helpful that the software understands what you want to do with it. All right, let's go on here and then bring up the exposure, of course. Then we bring down our highlights. And then also we are going to do some dehaze here. You can see that works beautifully already. We are half of the way there. 
Now, what I want to do here, and this is also different for Lightroom, is you can have different profiles for how color is handled. I'm not talking about sRGB or stuff like that. I'm talking about what kind of color setup you want to use like you for example can set up in your camera like for fluorescent light for sunlight for all these kind of light situations you can do it kind of similar here and here it's more intuitive like it says for example color for landscape for portrait standard or vivid so this is easier to understand for the user so let's go here for landscape because we do have a landscape you can already see the colors are changing a little bit they are a little bit nicer for this kind of situation let's bring this over here and make this a nice warm sunset like so and that already looks pretty cool we want to do some extra adjustment because this kind of looks a little bit green I don't want to have that so let's bring this over here look at that oh beautiful very nice very nice okay cool now here's some extra stuff that we have in Lightroom which is only has been added recently which is also very very nice and that is that we can go up here to masking and here you have these automatic masking selections so this is applying ai basically it understands the content of the image and you can say select sky and it will actually select the sky for you so it takes a little bit for detecting and you can see now it has a created a mask just for the sky area which is really cool and I can go in here and I can do some additional adjustments like for example I can make the sky a little bit warmer and then I can for example bring the highlights down a little bit more and bring the dehaze in a little bit so make it more dramatic maybe have a bit more clarity in here let's have a look at the shadows yeah I want to bring that up a little bit why not let's see oh we can have a nice glowing sky if we want to look at that how beautiful that is and of course you can do the same thing where you go here to add another mask and then another set sky if you want to do that and then just invert that so you have everything except the sky so you can see here it says sky you go in here and say invert so now we are down here and we can do some more adjustments to that area for example make it a little bit more bright and then also let's see with the highlights let's bring them back a little bit let's have a look at the shadows yeah I want to bring them up a little bit black values a little bit down and then the white values that is already okay pretty good okay cool so we have done that now we can still move down here and this is another thing where this is more intuitive is that you can pick here these areas and this is for adjusting hsl but this is for adjusting specific values for the hue for the saturation for the luminous where you pick them and moving them up and down in the image which is actually really smart to do it in that way so you can see here I can click on the sky and move it up and down and this will adjust all these kind of sky colors that I'm finding in my image like so and then I can click up here and see if this is a different value yeah these are actually the blue values as you can see here so this is actually changing that but if you look on the right side what kind of levers is this changing that is pretty interesting let's go down here for the blue and see what do we want to have that a little bit more blue maybe that looks good okay beautiful and you can do the same thing for saturation so I can go in here and say okay I want to have more saturation up here and then maybe I want to have a little bit less saturation down here where the blue is so it doesn't take too much attention from me and then you have color grading on top of that so color grading here is other than split toning that you find in a, a affinity photo this has three different values this goes for shadows midtones and highlights and by the way in photo lab you don't have split toning because that's an extra thing you need to buy I didn't buy that so no split toning for me but it's okay because I still also have Nick collection I can do a lot of stuff there with Viveza free with color effects with all these kind of cool things all right so let's go in here and maybe pump up the midtones a little bit let's see mm, that is what what do we want to have here actually should we, do you want to have a little bit more pink or a little bit more orange maybe like so you can still have this less bright or a little bit brighter which is also nice then for the highlights we also go a little bit for this kind of um, orange value here maybe let's go like this 
beautiful and then pull this here a little bit the shadows maybe a little bit more blue and there we go we have done some very nice subtle color grading and you can see how much we have improved that image here so as a final verdict here I have to say that my heart is very close to photo lab but if you've seen here that the results were kind of in the middle it really took out it it brought out a lot of the values from the photo but the colors weren't that nice maybe we need to invest some more time but it's not as fluent as as you've seen in Lightroom really impressive for Lightroom classic what you can do even with the recent updates so I'm kind of falling in love with Lightroom again I haven't used it for over 10 years but now they've added so much cool functions that actually you can do really cool stuff and the way the software works is very human it's not so technical and that is also a very nice way that you can just go with the flow and stay in your artistic expression affinity photo is very very good as an editing software I love it for that when I create all these composites you can see that this is my favorite software because it's built simple it has a very nice and intuitive interface and you can do so many cool things with it but for raw developments it's just not a good tool so if you photograph in raw a lot I would really suggest to look into other options and then come back to affinity photo for editing for removing all kinds of things clearing up skin removing people from the pictures this is where affinity photo really shines as an editing software i hope you enjoyed that video let me know about your opinion how you think about these different software tools what you are using for raw development and see you in my video about barcelona 72 hours photo challenge and see you on saturday bye mm -hmm.